Okay, so in about mm, 30 minutes or so, we have the Pac-12 Championship. The college football playoff rankings came out, and we know basically what our games are going to be. You know, well, we do know now what our games are going to be, our conference championships. There are five teams left in the hunt, not six, five teams left in the hunt. It's Alabama. Not rightfully ranked at number six. They should be number seven. Tennessee should be six, but, you know, semantics at this point. Both these teams have two losses. Both are out. Same with teams like Penn State, Washington, just out of the race for a conference championship. Just out of the race for the national title. But they won't be in a 12-team playoff. Yes, the 12-team playoff is indeed coming. We got the news, you know, Yesterday we got the news that the 12 team playoff is indeed coming in 2024 and 2025. So, you know, the 2024 season will be the first with a 12 team playoff, top six conference champions, top four get buys. You know, first round will be played at the home sites, second, you know, the Quarters and the semifinals will be played at bowl sites. The six New Year's bowl games will be played at those sites. And then the national championship moved up to MLK Day. I don't like that. I really don't. Like, that. There, there's, there's definitely some way, you know, college football can, you know, there, there, there's several things, you know, I don't like the fact that... I, I just don't think there's 12 teams that are worthy to win a national championship. There's not 12 teams. There's not, you know, the you know the NCAA runs the other postseason tournaments and everything like that, and they put the auto bids in. But we all know, you know, FCS for example, because people like to bring up the FCS a lot. There's not 24 teams that can win the FCS title. There really is not. There's maybe you know eight at best. You know, that can win it all. Um, they're like really good teams. You know, they can go all the way to the quarterfinals. You know, some make runs, but for the most part, it's the top teams that make it all the way in the FCS. Same thing in like D2 and D3. You know, there's there, there's a reason there's the Mary Hard Baylors, the Wisconsin Whitewaters, you know teams that are dynasties for a reason you know it's not the fact that it's you know oh they made it a 32 team bracket oh a 2018 24 16 team bracket no the dominant teams are still going to dominate it just is what it is I know I put up a poll last night as I was in and out of consciousness and you know some of y'all said yes I haven't had anybody say no yet, but I've heard some of y'all said yes so far. So what are the stakes? What are the stakes in these conference championships? What are the stakes here? Um, well, there's some other conference title games if you want to look at those, like UNT, my alma mater, UNT, in their final season along with UTSA in Conference USA, and then Coastal Carolina and Troy. Remember, Coastal got throttled. By JMU last week without their quarterback, and there's been some rumblings of um, JB Chadwell leaving, you know, Coastal, and then there's also Ohio Toledo in the MAC Championship, and Fresno State, Boise State in the Mountain West Championship. But there are six games we need to focus on because these are the six games that matter. First things first, Utah USC again coming up. In about 30 minutes or so, Cam Rising, Caleb Williams, Heisman on the line for Caleb Williams. Not only is the Heisman on the line, USC, USC's playoff hopes are on the line. The Trojans, they have a defense that can take the ball away, but they can't stop anything so you, you, on defense. They can't, stop a, they can't stop a gnat from getting past them, you know. Like that defense is horrid, but Utah, Utah has also had some rough patches where they've been gashed on the ground. You know, USC's had to you know get some backups in. You know, uh, 
because you know Travis Dye got hurt, and then you know USC's also got a bevy of wide receivers. It doesn't matter who it is, they look like a team that has wide receivers again. You know that can just you know like not just one wide receiver. I'm talking multiple. You know, so it's gonna be interesting to see there. You know, again, if USC loses, that is it for them. Two losses and you are out of the discussion. And Ohio State is sitting right there. You know, they already said no to the Rose Bowl. So they want in. And they might get it if Utah can beat USC again. Because remember, Utah and USC had a close matchup earlier in the season. And it ended up going Utah's way. Kansas State TCU. Kansas State is number 10 for some reason. They have no good wins, in all honesty, because they lost to Texas. Um, do not let the number 10 ranking fool you. This is a Kansas State team that is, you know, difficult at times. You know, you have Deuce Vaughn and Will Howard on one side of the football. You know, really good offense. Really damn good offense. Again, the Big 12 is a... You know, a top to bottom really good conference this year, a balanced conference this year. So, you know, that's kind of why Kansas State is number 10 because the Big 12 is balanced. You know, they don't really deserve to be number 10 because, you know, I would put Washington at number 10, just so y'all know. Um, but they're, they're at number 10, you know. I would have said like number 12 or something like that because I just don't see anything that says. Kansas State should be number 10 because, again, they lost to Tulane. They lost to Tulane, you know, and they have a loss to Texas, a team that's lower ranked than them and has, you know, no good wins either. And then the number three team in the country, Max Duggan, Sonny Dykes, and the Hypnotoads, the Horned Frogs of TCU, trying to stay undefeated. Now, there is, you know, you know, something, you know, on the line for TCU potentially, but again, they should be in regardless of what anybody thinks and a lot of people are thinking they should be in. They are in to me. So again, Utah USC is the only game that may matter at the end of the night. Kansas State probably going to the Sugar Bowl. Utah probably going to the Rose Bowl. You know, as far as these two games go, you see up to play. Um we'll see if John Rice Plumley can play for UCF. Again, UCF's running game, beautiful. Tulane's running game, Ty J. Spears, Michael Pratt, beautiful. You know, Willie Fritz said he ain't leaving Tulane. He ain't leaving. He's staying right here in New Orleans with the Green Wave. <laughs> because these are the only two teams in the group of five that are ranked this year, the winner gets the Cotton Bowl. And these two teams already played UCF beat Tulane earlier in the season, so, you know, it is what it is. And then, three loss LSU, you know, the whole thing with Brian Kelly and Jane Daniels definitely soured after they got throttled by Texas A&M. At Georgia, Stetson Bennett, Kirby Smart and company, they're just looking to stay number one heading into the playoff. Um, LSU again... <laughs> More than likely going to the Sugar Bowl, regardless, I would have to put down further, um, you know, because I don't think they're going to win this game. I'm just going to tell you all that right now. They're not going to win it. And then North Carolina Clemson, you know, it's going to be DJ Uyla and Drake May, you know, two teams that are just disappointed at the end of the season. North Carolina with two straight bad losses. Defense couldn't do anything. The offense, anemic for the Tar Heels and Clemson. Poor performance, you know, on special teams against South Carolina. Poor, even poor performance on defense against Notre Dame. You know, again, the winner gets the Orange Bowl. The loser, nothing of note. And then Purdue, Michigan. What if Purdue wins this game with Aiden O'Connell? Purdue finally getting to go to the Big Ten Championship and everything like that. And Purdue, their prize if it goes their way, is the Rose Bowl. It doesn't matter if they beat Michigan or not. Michigan is in. Same thing with LSU beating Georgia. Georgia is in. And really the same thing 
with Kansas State TCU. Now, I know people are going to be saying, well, what if it's a blowout? What if TCU gets blown out? I don't think they're going to get blown out. This is going all, most of these games, most of these six games are going to be close. There's going to be one game in there. You know, we don't know which one. That's going to be insane in regards to, hey, the score. The score here looks pretty bad. So, you know, there's that. In any case, that's all I got. Um, you know, Blake Corm's hurt, you know, for the Wolverines. So, Kate Nackmanera just transferred. And now it's up to J.J. McCarthy and Donovan Edwards, you know, and the Harbaugh and company to finish the job for the Wolverines to go 13-0 and and go back to the playoff yet again and maybe win it this time. So in any case, um, we, we we got we got we got some goodies. I'm ready, but are you ready? They start as soon as this video is uploaded. Like it's gonna be seven o'clock, you know, central soon. Until later on tonight after the Pac-12 championship, I'll see you all later.